Let me take you down. Imagine hearing your favorite song in a new way. Hello, hello, I'm Lance, and as you may know, on this channel, I tell stories about the Beatles, their music, and the people around them. But this video is a little bit less about the band and more about how to interact with much of their music. And if you're not a big Beatles fan, fear not. What I'll discuss in this video can apply to songs from any artist. Enter the OOPS method. OOPS, it stands for Out of Phase Stereo. I first heard about it in the 90s on Usenet and in AOL chat rooms, but it's been around for decades. Essentially, it's a simple technique of changing the way a recording hits your ears. You may have seen this before and just didn't know what was going on. Old karaoke machines with a vocal remover likely applied this same effect. This technique is known by other names like phase cancellation, but I'm sticking with oops because that's just how I learned it. Anyway, I won't get too technical, but I will show you how to easily do it yourself and how to experiment with your own music library, and I'll discuss some examples of applying oops to Beatles music and music of other artists. Before I go on, here's another example of what you can hear. When you apply the oops effect, you might hear something you're not really supposed to, like a tape edit, a flubbed guitar lick, or unintentional studio chatter. And sometimes the technique will isolate instruments or vocals that make them really stand out. Now, all changes may not be radical, but for serious music fans who know their favorite songs inside and out, the search can be a lot of fun. If you're interested in trying it on your own, you should know a little bit about what's happening. First, it only works on stereo recordings. Mono won't work. More on that in a second. When you oops audio, you are canceling sounds out. On a stereo track, the mixing process at the studio assigned different elements of the recording to the left versus the right. This is called panning. Very often, some sounds will be perfectly centered, usually vocals. Whatever is in the center is what will be removed with this effect. And as you'll see, what's left after silencing these centered elements can offer a brand new listening experience. If you want to do this yourself, it's easy. There are two different ways that I'll discuss. First, if you want to go old school, you're going to change the wiring of your speakers. I'm guessing this will be a fraction of viewers though, so I've linked to specific instructions down in the description. This is the easier way for longer form, kind of serious listening, but it's not for everyone. But for everyone else, especially if you've downloaded music or ripped CDs, you're going to do this with software. If you're used to working with digital audio, essentially, you're going to take a stereo track and invert the phase on one of the stereo channels, then sum it down to mono and listen back. If you're new to this though, here's how to do it step by step. First, go download Audacity. It's free, lightweight, and works with Mac or PC. Again, links are in the description. Once you've installed Audacity, open up the song you want to work with. MP3 is common, but Audacity can open up a number of file types. If you have a file that won't open, then you'll need to convert it or just try a different song. Here's a quick look at a mono file, by the way. Reminder, this won't work with Oops. Since there's only one channel of audio, there's nothing to cancel out. Now here's a stereo track. There is a manual way to do this, involving splitting, inverting, and listening back in mono, but Audacity offers a plugin, just a standard effect, that makes this a little bit easier. Select the entire track, then click on Effect, then Vocal Reduction and Isolation. Once there, change the action to Remove Center Classic, Mono, then click OK. Now listen back and see what you hear. Regardless of the song, band, or genre, let me know down in the comments what you're hearing with Oops. If you've tried this and things either sound the same or they don't really stand out, either the track didn't get oopsed properly or maybe the track just doesn't offer enough panning variation to stand out to your ears, definitely try another track. If you're having trouble, post that in the comments too and see if somebody can help out. So that's it. That's a primer on the oops effect. Now I'll close this video out with a few more examples. And because of copyright issues, I unfortunately can't play much of each track. But now you can do the same thing at home on your own. Most of these examples that I'm talking about are from the Beatles main catalog. But if you want to branch out, try anthology songs, try deluxe edition tracks, or try the love soundtrack. Also note that this isn't the same thing as having access to the master tapes. There will be some leakage from other tracks. It's just the nature of what we're doing. I wouldn't recommend this technique to the guys at Abbey Road for remixing or official releases or anything like that. And lastly, this probably won't be the primary way anyone wants to listen to music. 
It's just for fun, to see what your ears can unearth. All right, on to a few more examples. And like I said earlier, the oops effect doesn't work just on Beatles songs, of course. Here are a few more recent examples. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like these videos that I make, please consider subscribing here on YouTube. And if you're already a subscriber, see if you can take your support to the next level. I would really appreciate it if you would check out what I'm doing on Patreon. You can learn more about that at patreon.com slash fab4archivist.